Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you guys how to create this Banksy shredded art photo or Banksy inspired shredded art photo I should say. This tutorial is going to be using GIMP version 2.10.8 which at the time of this tutorial is the latest version of GIMP. But of course, before we get started, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our best-selling GIMP 2.10 photo editing from beginner to pro photo retoucher course. And you could support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is one of the stock photos I'll be using in today's tutorial. This is a free photo from Pixabay. Go ahead and click free download here. I just went with the 1151 by 1280 version. And I also use this photo of a woman and you can click this free download option here and I went with the 962 by 1280 version. All right, so for those of you who aren't aware of this uh, Banksy art that I'm referring to, Banksy created a uh, painting or like a form of street art that I guess he put onto a canvas or whatever and then he put it into a frame and then right after it auctioned for 1.4 million dollars or whatever it was he uh, shredded the photo. I think a lot of you guys are aware of this but I thought it actually created a really awesome piece of art when all was said and done so I figured I would recreate it here in GIMP. So let's get started. I'm going to go to file open recent and I'm going to choose the picture frame here that I downloaded and I'm just going with the original 1152 by 1280 size here. We're gonna expand the size of our canvas as we work on this and actually let's get started with that. So I'm gonna to go to image, canvas size and I want this to be a little bit longer than it is right now. So the original height is 1280. I'm just gonna increase this. Right now we'll go with 1600 and we're gonna go back and increase the width a little bit later and actually let me just go Let's go full 2000 here and I'll hit resize. So that just gives us a little bit of room on the bottom there. And now what I need to do is erase the white in the middle here. So let me right click on here and just make sure that we do have an alpha channel added to this photo. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, not too much there. And I'm using control of my mouse wheel to zoom in. And what I used originally was this fuzzy select tool. And you want to find sort of the sweet spot for the threshold here. And all you need to do once you find that sweet spot is click in here and that is going to select all of the white within our frame and then hit the delete key and that will delete all of the white in the center there and then hit control shift A and that'll deselect everything. Now this won't be perfect. We'll go back a little bit later and sort of touch up that white that's still along the edges of our frame there, but that's gonna be good enough for now. Next what I'll do is I'll bring in our photo of the woman. So I'm going to just find that photo on my computer in the uh, file folder, wherever you save that. And then just click and drag that into GIMP and just drop it right there directly onto our current active composition. And we can just come over here and change this to model and hit enter. So I just double clicked on that name to change it. Now what you want to do is click and drag this below our frame layer. And let me just reposition this a little bit. You do want to make sure that this is sized correctly here. So what I'll do is I'll just drag this so that the corner, the top left corner aligns with the top left corner of the frame. And then I'm going to grab my scale tool here, click on our composition and make sure that this icon here or this chain is linked. And then I'm going to click and drag this in until the width of our image matches up with the width of our frame. And I'll just hit scale. And now that I've done that, I'll grab my move tool and I'll just move this up and I'll hold control while I do that to keep this in straight line mode. And let's just zoom in here using control in the mouse wheel to double check. So you'll see I did make this a little bit too small here. That's all right and it's a little bit too small over here. So I'll just move this to the left a little bit, come back over here to the right grab my scale tool again. I don't recommend doing this too many times because every time you transform using the transform tool, it's going to decrease the overall quality. And uh, I also recommend hitting the interpolation here and setting it to no halo or low halo. So let me just increase the size here a tiny bit. And we'll go with right there and I'll hit scale and it doesn't have to be completely perfect. Some of that's going to be concealed when we add a uh, background behind here. But anyway, once we've done that, I'm going to grab my move tool and I'm going to click on our composition here and then hold the control key and just drag it down a little bit. So you're just going to drag this down to the point where you want this to uh, basically stop and be shredded. Uh, so the bottom portion here will be shredded and the top portion will not be shredded. So keep that in mind. 
So I'll just sort of uh, even this out so that her head is still perfectly intact and then the lower part of her body is the part that's getting shredded. Once I have this in place, I'm going to adjust our canvas one more time just so that it is the width and height that we want it. So I'll go to image, canvas size again, and this time I'm just going to increase the width a little bit and you can either eyeball it or you can put in whatever uh, direct you know, width you want here. I'll just go with 2000 to make this a square and then I'll hit center here and I'll hit resize. There we go. Now I'm gonna add a new layer and I'll just keep this name background here and I'll keep the fill width set to white and click OK. I'll move this down to the bottom of the layer stacking order. And then what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'm going to grab a black that I used earlier when I was creating this composition. So it's just 4A, 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 if you want to copy that HTML notation. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a darker black, which actually is this 27, 27, 27 number here. So I'll click OK. I'll grab my gradient tool and I'll make sure the shape is set to radial here. And I'm just going to click somewhere near the center of my image and I'll drag it to the outer corner like so. And once I'm happy with that, I'll hit the enter key to apply my gradient. But I don't want the background of my frame to be the same as the background of our image here. So I'm actually going to delete the color inside here and just add white there. So I'll grab my uh, rectangle select tool and click and drag this and release. And so we're just taking up the space that's inside of our frame. And I'll hit the delete key and then I'll just grab my bucket fill tool, change the color to white and then just fill this in with that white. And then I'll hit Control Shift A to deselect that, or you can go to Select None. And now you can see it looks like our frame is hanging on the wall and uh, the part of the image that is being shredded basically is revealing the white in the frame behind it. And then the wall color itself is like this grayish black here. All right, so now we're gonna start getting into the more complicated stuff. So I'll hold Control and zoom in a little bit. So you can see that our frame still has some white going on in the outer edges here. And let me just get rid of some of that now, and then we're gonna get rid of a little bit more later. So I'll just click on this using my fuzzy select tool again, and then I'll hit the delete key, and I'll hit Control Shift A. That is still pretty rough there, so we're gonna go back later and finish that off. But for now, we'll just leave that as is. So the next thing we're gonna do is create the effects that are going to create the shading for our shredded artwork. So I'll come over here and click to create a new layer, and I'm just gonna name this Shred Shading, and I'll set the fill width to transparency and click OK. Now what I'll do is I'll come over to my gradient tool here and I'm just gonna set the foreground and background colors to white for now, but I'm gonna come over here and change the gradient itself to foreground to transparency. So click on that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click as close as we can to the left side of our artwork and we're gonna hold control and drag over to the right side. And when we get to the right side, we'll just release. And what we're doing is we're creating a step gradient here and those steps are going to host various shades of gray and those shades are going to be what makes this look like shredded paper basically or a shredded piece of artwork. So now what we have to do is come over here and change the gradient to foreground to background RGB. Make sure your shape is set to linear. And now we're gonna come in here, so I'll hold control and zoom in a little bit using my mouse wheel. And you'll see right here we have a midpoint on our gradient. If I click on that midpoint, it's gonna give me this midpoint box right here. And what I'll do is I'll change the blending here to step. And then I'll come over here and I will click the new stop at midpoint option. And that is going to turn that midpoint into a stop, which basically means that is now going to be a new color. So you'll see there's a left color and a right color option here. We're gonna leave these alone for now, but we're gonna come over here to this midpoint that is created as a result of creating this new stop. So every time you create a stop, it's going to create a new midpoint. And we're gonna do the same thing, but you'll see our blending is already set to step here. So I'm just going to create a new stop right there. And I'm gonna click on this new midpoint that's created as a result of that. And I'll create another new stop. And I'm just gonna do that until basically I have the amount of stops that I want throughout my entire gradient here. And I'm just going to start with the right side of our gradient first. All right, so we've got our right side down. We're going to repeat this for the left side. So I'll just come over here and create a new stop. Click on this midpoint, create a new stop. Okay, so now that we have an equal number of stops on the left side and right side of our gradient, now what we need to do is come over here, click on the first stop on the far left, 
and we're going to set just the right color here. That's just gonna make it easier. And what we're doing here, again, is creating shades of gray. So I'm gonna click on my right color, and I'm just going to use the L slider. If you don't see it, you're probably on HSV. Uh, so just come over here to the LCH slider and drag this L slider, which is basically going to darken or lighten this white. So it's either gonna make it more black if I go all the way to the left or more white. So I'm just going to darken this up a little bit here and I'll click OK. And then I'll move on to our next stop here. And again, I'm just going to adjust the right color so there you'll see now I'm going to create a different shade of gray here and click OK. And I'm just doing this randomly so I'm not following any sort of pattern. I'm just randomly creating various shades of gray. And I'm only adjusting my right color. And I'm just going to do this all the way down the line. I've already done this earlier so I'm not going to go all the way through this again. So I'll come down here to the gradient that I saved earlier. And this is my final result. So you'll see I just have various shades of gray throughout. The main difference is that instead of using white here, I just use almost like a gray color for my endpoints here. But I did use the same technique here throughout my gradient where I just have random shades of gray. So once you have all of your shades of gray created, just hit the enter key to apply. So that will apply our gradient, but you'll see the problem now is that it covers up our artwork. So what we'll need to do is create a layer mask to mask anything that goes outside of the artwork area. So I'm gonna hold my Alt key and click on our layer that has our model. And that is going to select just our model. It's not gonna select any other part of our layer. And now what I can do with that is I can make sure I'm still clicked on the shred shading layer, right click on here and go to add layer mask. And I'm going to choose selection here under initialize layer mask two and click add. So that'll mask everything out besides our selection area. So you'll see the issue here is that the top part of our artwork has the shading here and we only want the bottom part of our artwork to have that. So I'm gonna come over here to our rectangle select tool and I'll click on our selection that we created. And I'm gonna drag the bottom part of this up until it is past the frame here. And now I'm gonna grab my bucket fill tool, make sure the opacity is set to 100. And I'll grab my foreground color and change this to black. And click OK. And now I'm going to fill this in with that black color and black is going to create transparency which means it's going to hide all of that shading up here in the top part. So now that we have that I'll hit Control Shift A and that'll deselect our selection area. So this is obviously way too prominent. What I'll do and I'm actually just going to rename this shred because I'm tired of saying shred shading and I'm just going to name this frame. But I'm going to come down here to our shred layer and I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm just gonna do this because I'm gonna apply two different layer modes to this and that's going to allow me to create some dynamic shading on here. So for this top layer, I'm going to change the layer mode of this to soft light and I'm going to set the opacity of this to somewhere around 60. And I'm gonna come down here to our second layer and I'm gonna change this one to burn and then I'm gonna decrease the opacity of this one a little bit lower so I'll go somewhere around 40. And if I hold control and zoom in, you can see this is already creating some cool shading here. And you can start to see the shredding effect coming together now. And actually I'm gonna come back up here to our shred copy layer and just increase the opacity of this a little bit. And you can see if I hide this layer without the soft light, it's almost too dark here, only with the burn layer. So uh, basically this soft light just sort of adds a little bit of dynamic lighting to the shredding effect. Whereas the burn on the other hand is gonna add a little bit of darkness, a little bit of contrast almost. So these two layers basically feed off of each other and create this cool final result. Next what I'm gonna do is come over here and create a new layer group. I'm gonna rename this shred effect and hit enter. And I'm just gonna click and drag each of these layers into this layer group. And I'm just gonna make sure that the layer stacking order is kept the same. Once I've done that, I'm gonna come up here to the shred effect layer group, right click on here and go to add layer mask. This is a feature that is only available in GIMP versions 2.10 and above. So if you're using an older version of GIMP, this part isn't gonna work for you. And I do recommend upgrading to the latest version of GIMP. But I'm gonna come over here and change my initialized layer mask two to white and click add. So that'll add a layer mask to our entire group, which means whatever we do to this layer mask is going to affect all of the contents within this layer group. So now I'm gonna come over here to our Ken Brewer Pass tool, and this is named after Ken Brewer, our Diamond Patreon supporter. And I'm gonna hold control and zoom in a little bit. So what I wanna do is I want to make the, the strips down here a little bit uneven. It just looks a little bit more realistic that way. Right now it looks a little bit too tidy down here. So what I'll do is I'll just click to create these nodes with our path tool. And I'm just basically randomly uh, going to 
draw a crooked line with this pass tool. And I'm just going to draw this last one like that. And now what I'll do is I'll just click down here and just make sure that we connect this. So I'm gonna hold the control key to create a union and then I'm going to, with my last node selected here, click on our first node and that will join all of our nodes together here with this path. And now I'm gonna come over here to my foreground color and make sure this is a true black and then I'm gonna click on fill path and I'm just going to select the solid color option and click fill. And now you'll see the bottom part of our strips disappear there uh, wherever they intersect with this path. So I'm just going to choose a new tool and you guys can really see that in action. I might have overdone it there a little bit with the path tool, but that's all right. So now what I'll do is I'll grab the path tool again and I'll zoom in here using control in my mouse wheel. And I'm just going to click and create a node right there along where these two strips meet. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom and I can always click and drag this to make sure that this is straight aligned here. And then I'm going to click over here to create another point. And then I'm going to come up here and hold control and create a union there. And this is going to create like an elongated triangle. And this is going to create a little bit of depth here with our strips. So it's just going to make it look like some of these strips are a little bit further back and some of them are a little bit further up. And you'll see what I mean when we uh, apply this effect. So I'm gonna hold shift and click on here again and that's going to create a new node here. But these paths are gonna be connected which means whatever I do with this path is going to occur with this one. So now I'll come down here and click again and then I'll just click right here. And I don't want these triangles to be too wide. If they are, I can just click on one of these nodes and drag it in a little bit. And then I'll hold shift and I'm just gonna do the same right here. And maybe this one I'll have go the other way and I'll hold control and create a union there. Maybe bring this in a little bit. You don't have to do these for every single one. I do think it does help to add a little bit to the depth and it does make it look a little bit more realistic. And again, I'll drag that one in a little bit. This one I'll start a little bit higher up. So hold shift, click again. And you can always start out with just a few of these to see how it looks and then you can add more a little bit later just to make sure you don't add too many of these. So hold shift. All right, so there we go. Again, I didn't do it on every single one of these. And now what I'll do is I'll make sure that I'm on my layer mask here, and then I'll come over to our Pass Tool options and I'll click Fill Path. And again, I'll just choose Solid Color here and click Fill. And now if I grab a different tool, we can see the effect this is creating. So it looks like some of these strips are a little bit further back while some are a little bit further ahead, depending on you know, what kind of shading it has going on. So the lighter ones look like they're just a little bit closer to us, whereas the darker ones look a little bit further away. And I think this looks pretty good here. You guys can spend a little bit more time on this if you want to you know, add a little bit more of those little elongated triangles there. But I'm just gonna make sure I'm still clicked on our layer mask here for our layer group. And then I'll come over to our My Paintbrush tool and make sure that you're set to this dry brush here. You can just look through these until you find the dry brush and feel free to copy my settings. But basically what I did with this brush is I came down here and I just sort of roughed up the bottom. And I'll hit Control Z. I actually do want to decrease this radius quite a bit here. So let me decrease that. And I'll just work on this until I get the radius I like. And if you guys have a better grunge brush, you know, that you downloaded online or something, feel free to use that. I just basically am using this again to rough up the edges on here so they don't look too perfect. Right now they're a bit too straight. And you can hold control and zoom out to sort of check on your progress. So I'll hold control and just zoom all the way out. You guys can see what our composition looks like so far. It looks pretty good. So next I'm gonna come over here and click on a layer within our layer group and I'll click here to create a new layer. And I'm just gonna rename this indent and I'm gonna fill this with transparency and click okay. And what we're gonna do with this layer is we're just gonna emulate the look that this went through a shredder. So there's usually like an indent left where the shredder started with the paper. And so I'm just gonna come over here to my paintbrush tool and I'm gonna change this to a softer brush. And I'm gonna make sure this is set to black. 
And now I'm just going to draw a loose line here through our image. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to go through here and sort of uh, correct this in a second. I'll hit X on my keyboard or I'll just click this icon here to shift over to our white. And now I'm just going to paint white on the top part of this. And I'll hit X again and just switch back to black to repaint any parts we kind of messed up here. Once we've done that, I'm going to come over here to the layer mode and change this to soft light. And I'm just going to decrease the opacity of this down to, let's say, about 50% or so. And that looks a little bit rough right now, so we're going to grab our eraser tool and we're going to increase the size of this. Not too much. And then we're just going to erase some of the excess here, and this is also going to help soften some of those edges there. And I'll hit Control Z, I'm just going to redo this. Alright, so as you can see now that shading makes this look like there's like this indent here where maybe the photo started going through the shredder. And if I hold Control and zoom out, now it looks like our artwork is being shredded just like the Banksy artwork. The last thing I'm going to do is click on our frame layer. And with my eraser tool still selected, I'm going to hold control and zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go to layer, layer to image size, and that'll just increase the boundaries of that layer there. Let me decrease the size of my brush a little bit more. I'll hold control and zoom in a bit more. And actually, let me first use this uh, fuzzy select tool, hit delete, then hit control shift A. I'm just trying to get rid of the white here. So let me decrease the eraser brush size a little bit more. And also let me choose a hard brush here. All right, so now I'm gonna hold the shift key and that's gonna put me in straight line mode. And I'll just click and then I can hold the space bar and move over on my image. So again, hold the shift key and click. And you can see that as I do that, it's going to erase this white that's on the border of our frame. And that's just gonna help clean this up a little bit. And then we'll do this part up here And when we get to this part, we're just going to grab our fuzzy select tool again, click on that and hit the delete key, and then hit control shift A, and grab the eraser tool. This time I'm going to shrink it using the brackets on my keyboard, and we're just going to erase these white parts right here, then hold the shift key and erase in a straight line, and I'll hold my space bar to move along my image. And then I'm just going to move over here to the left side of our frame, and I'm not going to worry about that corner there, but I am going to erase this stuff here. Until we get back to our starting point on the frame. Then I'll hold control and zoom out. And there we go. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit our website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. You can enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.